So as we get started today, I want us to play a little game together to help us get ready for what we're about to talk about. And over here, I have a bowl full of Orbeez. And in this bowl and jar are, are lots of Orbeez. Now you know what an Orbeez was before this week, but apparently they're really popular and you can get a lot of them for really cheap on Amazon. So here we go. This is an Orbeez and this jar is full of them. And I want you to take a guess with me, whether you're here in person or in Scots or watching online. How many of these things do you think are in this jar? All right, just take a guess. If you're watching online, type it in the chat. How many you think are in this jar? And talk to somebody next to you. Just give a guess about what you think. This is going to be fun. All right. Everybody got a, got a number in mind? Okay. All right, so let's see. How many think it's more than 1,000? All right, you're on the right track. How many think it's more than 5,000? All right, how about more than 10,000? Okay, how about more than 15,000? Okay, more than 20,000? Okay, let's get a little slimmer. How about more than 25,000? Oh man, all right. How about more than 30,000? Oh, it's getting smaller. How about more than 40,000? All right, I'm gonna stop there because you already lost if you think it's that many, all right? <laughs> Now you're like, what is the number? Well, there are approximately, well, I'd say approximately, there's probably, because some of them got spilled out in other staff members' offices as we were making this, but there, there are hopefully 29,200 of these things in this jar. How many came close to that? A few of you, how many guessed that exact number? You're lying, I'm not even gonna believe you. <laughs> but that's, that's a lot, right? Now, some of you are like, that's not that many. You know, some of y'all thought it was over 40,000. Some of y'all thought that was way more than you expected to be in this jar. But if you think about that number in perspective, like for those of you, if you had 29,000 ants in your house, you'd be like, that's a lot of ants, right? Like that number would be huge. But for others of you, maybe you have $29,000 to live on in your retirement for 30 years. Now that number doesn't seem as big, right? So it's all about the way in which we see this number. Now, you're probably wondering, where did I get this number from this week? Well, I started doing some math, which is something I rarely do. So I hope the math is correct. It may be off a little bit, but go with me today. The math that I did in my head as I prepared for today was if I had 80 years on this earth, if God blessed me with 80 years, how many days would that give me to live? And so I came up with that number. I multiplied it out, and that's the number that is in this jar, 29,200. That's how many days, if the average person lives 80 years old, that's how many days you'll get to spend on this earth. Now, for some of you, that may seem still like a lot, but for the majority of us, and if you're like me, that freaks you out a little bit, doesn't it? To think that you only have 29,000 days to live on this earth if you're living up to 80. Now, some of y'all have exceeded that, and you're like, I'm living on borrowed time at this point, but I got more Orbeez than I thought. And that's great. That's good. And, and that's the blessing I hope I have in my life too. But for a lot of us, maybe we've never thought about our life that way, right? We just kind of live our days every single day. And we don't think about the gift of each day that we're given here on this earth. And because many of us think that our lives are full of so many days is that we don't really take time to cherish each day that we're given. And so today, I want you to think about that number as we go into our time together, because that's going to kind of lead us through our time together as we have our last discussion in this series, Word to the Wise. And let me pause right there just to say welcome. Thanks for being here today. If this is your first time, especially with us, thanks for entrusting us today with your church experience. I hope today that you learn something or inspired by something that helps you in your life and in your faith journey, because I know how awkward it can be to walk into a church or to tune in online for the first time. So thank you so much for being with us today. My name is Trey. I'm one of the pastors here. And like I said, we've been in this series talking about how to do our lives better through gaining the wisdom that we need to make huge life decisions that we have that face us every single day. Because you and I, we have so many decisions that we have to make on a daily basis. It can be hard to choose the right decision or to make the right choice. And we're oftentimes going, what do I do with these decisions that I didn't think would come my way? And so whatever decisions you're facing, whatever you're going through today, um, I hope the wisdom that we learn will begin to help you in your life, no matter what you're going through or struggling with. And there's so many places and people that we turn to for advice. 
And during this series, we've said, you know what? Let's take time to learn from timeless advice. And that's found in the Bible. The Bible has so much to say about wisdom for our lives. There's actually an entire book that's dedicated to it called the book of Proverbs. And during this series, that's what we've been studying and going through is learning more about this book that we've been given in the Bible. And so we've been challenged as well to, to read a proverb a day. I always heard the proverb a day keeps the devil away. I don't know if that's true, but hey, it stuck with me. So, but we've been reading the proverbs and talking about how we can get the wisdom that we need no matter what we're facing. And I hope it's been helpful for you. Um, we're almost done with our reading plan. I think you only got like two or three days left. So congratulations. If you've been on the plan, you read an entire book of the Bible. Like that's awesome. There's a lot more, but hey, you read one of them and that's good. So keep it up. I hope you're enjoying that. And we've been doing this 21 days of prayer and it's been awesome to see all the things that you wrote on the board here or prayers that you submitted to us. I can tell all of us have things that we're dealing with and decisions that we're trying to make. And so today, as we choose to seek God during this last installment of this series together, I hope and pray that we find the wisdom that we need for our futures. Because all of us, as we look ahead for our lives, we know that the decisions we're making now ultimately don't just affect now, right? They affect our futures. And so for you and I, we have to figure out how to handle each situation that we're given and make the best wise decision that we can make to help us discover the wisdom that we need. So as we jump in today, if you have a Bible, we're gonna go ahead and open up one last time to the book of Proverbs, and we're gonna open up to chapter 19, and we're gonna look at verses 20 through 21. So if you have a Bible or a Bible app, go ahead and open up there. If not, we'll put it up on the screens for you. And here is what this verse says. It says, listen to advice and accept instruction that you may gain wisdom in the future. Everybody say future. So there it is. Gain wisdom in your future. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it's the purpose of the Lord that will stand. And so there's a lot in this little verse here that it tells us about our futures. But in order for us to, to have a future that, that we're proud of and that we're excited about and that we got to see some great things happen in our lives, we have to first, like the Proverbs say, we have to listen Listen to advice. Gain the wisdom that we need. And that's why we've been going to God's word and just allowing God to speak to us and listen to him. And then the second thing that it tells us to do is to accept that instruction. Not just listen to it, but say, you know what? This is beneficial for my life. And you actually put into practice the things that we're learning. Because like we said, wisdom isn't just knowing the right thing to do. It's choosing to do the right thing even when it's hard. And so how do we become wise? We simply listen to advice and then we do what it says. We accept that discipline and actually put it into practice. And then when it comes to wisdom, and last week we learned about this, sometimes the best way for us to find the wisdom that we need or to make better decisions is by asking better questions. And so last week we walked through just a few questions found in this book by Andy Stanley called Better Decisions, Fewer Regrets. If you've never read this book, I promise you it's worth the read. It's very short for people like me, and it's very helpful as far as making decisions in our lives. And so we went through three questions last week, and we talked about the idea, of, am I being honest with myself really when I approach a decision? And then we talked about, is there tension that deserves my attention? Is there red flags that we're noticing in our decision-making? And then lastly, we talked about the idea, what's the wise thing to do? Not what I want to do, but, but what's the wise thing to do? And so today, we're going to talk about one more question. And this question has to do with the future that you and I should ask every time we're faced with a decision to help us find the wisdom that we need. And so the question we're going to talk about today as we wrap up this series is this, is what story do I want to tell? When you think about your future and you think about your life and you're making a decision, the question you should ask is, what story do I want to tell? And you may be thinking, that's a weird question to ask. Maybe I've never thought about asking that question when it comes to making decisions in my life. But we know this is that every decision you make becomes a permanent part of your story, whether you like it or not. And that's the story of your life. And so what story do you want to tell with your life? And maybe better said, what story do you want people to tell about your life after you're gone? 
These are big questions for us to ask ourselves as we think about the future that we want to have in our lives. But the primary reason you and I don't think about our lives in terms of, of story is because we think that's reserved for later, right? I'll think about, you know, what I want said at my funeral later in life. But really, we should be thinking about that right now. Because you and I, we're writing our stories every single day of our lives. And you and I have to choose the story that we want to tell by the decisions that we make. I love this verse in Psalm 90, 12, that tells us the most important thing we can do when it comes to this idea of understanding the days that we have. And it says this, teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Teach us, Lord, to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. See, whenever I read this passage, it reminds me of what we've been talking about, even when I shared with you this number that we started off the service with. This idea that when we think about our days and we actually number them and think about how many that we have, it helps us live each day with intention. And not just go, I'll wait till tomorrow, but it's like, no, I only have a certain amount of these days left. I want to utilize them to the best way that I can and take advantage of the days that God has given me and not waste the life that God's given me to live. So Lord, teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. What story do you want to tell? What story do you want others to tell about you? I remember seeing this picture on uh, Facebook not too long ago. And as I was preparing for the series, I was like, this is the, the picture that was so convicting to me. And here's what it looked like. When I saw this, it just, it really I, I spoke to me, thinking about the number of days that you and I have left and the number of days and, and places and people that are important to us. When you look at how much life you have left, it makes you stop and think, doesn't it? Makes you stop and think how you want to parent your kids. Makes you stop and think about how you want to treat your spouse. Makes you stop and think about how important the people are around you. It makes you think about how important this life that God has given us in every day and every moment of how sacred it really is. Pretty cool, huh? But kind of scary and terrifying, right? Because we don't think like this every day. We just get so wrapped up in our schedules and our routines that we forget about that, that this is the day the Lord has made. This is the day that he's given us to live, that we shouldn't waste it or take it for granted. We should, we should truly live it. But yet, for sometimes, that's so hard for us to do in the midst of all that we have going on. I went ahead and took it a step further. I got real weird this week and decided to, to map out how many days I have left out of my jar and so as I did the numbers and crunched the figures for myself, uh, so far I've used up 12,775 of my days. And if I'm lucky and I get to 80, I will have 16,445 days left to continue to write the story of my life here on this earth. And that about freaked me out this week, right? I only got 16,000 days? Lord, help me, you know, like that's scary. Because we think we're living it and it's going to last forever here on this earth, but it, but it doesn't. So you and I, we have to be wise about the days that we're given. We have to be wise about the future that we're creating for ourselves and our families and people that are around us. Because if not, it's going to go by. And you and I are going to have much of a story to tell. And so today... As we ask that question of ourselves, what story do I want to tell? Here's the decision you and I have to make in order to find the wisdom that we need. And the, que or the decision is this, is I will decide a story that I'm proud to tell. I won't wait till later to figure out who I want to be or what I want to do. It starts right now. I'll decide a story that I'm proud to tell. I want a story that I'm proud to tell my kids and they're proud to tell their grandkids. I want a story that matters, and I hope that you do too. And so this last question is so important for us to ask of ourselves. And so make sure, take moments to, to really think about that and decide the story that you want to tell for your life and seek God in the wisdom that he needs to give you. And so far, we've talked about all the different ways in which we could find wisdom in our relationships, in our faith, 
in, in our journeys of life, in our decisions. And today, as we talk about our future and we conclude with this, I really want you to think about this as we pertains to our story that we want to tell and how do we do it. It's this question that you probably are asking yourself now. Is, so how do I get the wisdom that I need to write a better story? God, how do I get the wisdom I need to write a better story? Because some of us, we don't even know where to start, right? Like we just know that we want to do better or do this, but, but really we have, to, we have to be honest with ourselves so much so that we got to say, okay, if I want to br- write a better story, what do I need to do in order for that to take place? And I just started thinking about my life and I thought about the unwise decisions that I've made and I've thought about the wisdom that I've been given and I thought really my wisdom that I've been given in my life boiled down to three big things. And if I could leave you with anything as we finish this series up, I wanna leave you with this because this isn't about just getting wisdom. This is about truly seeking God and growing in our faith. And as we do, God gives us the, the wisdom and the guidance that we need to do the things that he's called us to do. And so here are the three things I wanna give you as we put wisdom into practice, as we think about living our best life and our best story, here's some questions you should ask as you approach any big decision. Here's some things I think would be very helpful for you to do when you're trying to go, where do I go? What do I do? How do I navigate this decision? The first thing that I've learned to do ultimately is the most important thing is we have to rely on God's voice. We choose to rely on God's voice. I think so many times we're so filled and cluttered with other people's voices and other noise around us that, that we don't take time to really listen for what, for what God wants. And most of the time we make decisions based upon what we want or what we think is best for us. But sometimes we ain't the smartest people, right? And we make some pretty dumb decisions that we ultimately regret. But if we take time to really listen to God, and that's what we've been trying to do and teach you with this 21 days of prayer, it's just taking time out of your day to seek God, to find him, to tune out all the other voices and, and let his voice be the loudest one that you hear. But that means we have to make God a priority. And if we're honest, most of us, God isn't much of our priority when we look at the way we spend our time or our resources or our energy. And so today, let's truly choose to rely on God's voice. Proverbs 2, 6 tells us this in our reading plan that we've been reading. It says, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. And so he wants to give you the wisdom that, he need, that you need. He wants to help you. He wants to be there for you. But guess what? You have to open up your ears long enough to hear him. And so many times we're so distracted by everything else that we never give God the attention that he needs to tell us how we should decide to do that or where we should go or what we should do with our lives. And see, so let's remember, if we truly number our days and realize how short they are, we should want to rely on God for everything because we know that there's more beyond just this world that we're living in. Yeah, our days are numbered here, but there's an eternity that waits for us. And I don't know about you, but I wanna get to know the Savior I'm gonna spend eternity with. And that's where that relying on God's voice comes in, allowing his to be the loudest voice that we hear. And then the second thing is this, we don't only just rely on his voice, we choose to read his word. We choose to read his word. I'm so sorry. I hope you have a better day. <laughs> I know I'm, I'm kind of scary. But the second thing we choose to do is rely on God's voice, and then we choose to read his word. We choose to read his word because he's given us this book and this story to help us with our stories. And I know for so many of us, we're like, okay, I, I have so much things I'd rather read. But the Bible has been given to us to help us in our times of need. But so many times it just sits on our shelves collecting dust. But we should open God's word up to find the wisdom that we need because he's given us a story already. There are people that have gone before us and done things and experienced things that we can learn from. And there's things that God wants to tell us through his word. But if we never open it, we don't know what he has to say to us. And I love this. Psalm 119, 105 tells us this, is that your word is a lamp. Everybody say lamp as a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. And so for some of us, we're worried about where to go or what to do. And God's word literally says like, it's a lamp. It shows you where to go. 
It teaches you what to do. And so if you're confused or anxious or nervous about a decision to make, God's word is a great place to go to, to find the wisdom that you need. I remember my grandpa, when I finished Bible college, came up to me and uh, I thought he always liked to give me these trick questions. And he said, hey, do you know what the Bible stands for? And I was like, I don't know if I've ever thought about that. I just spent all this money on education. I have no idea the answer to that question. I was like, what's the Bible stand for? And he said, it's simple, the basic instructions before leaving earth. And I was like, what an acronym. I never knew that. So listen to your grandparents, guys. It's the best thing you can do if you want wisdom. But simple, right? But God's word is a lamp to our past. He tells us where to go and what to do. He shows us the way. He helps us learn his story to make our stories better. But we have to pick it up and we have to read it. And that's why we've been challenging you during this time to really make your faith your own and seek God for the wisdom that you need. Because he wants to give it to you. And he wants you to understand just how much he wants to be there for you and have a relationship with you. But for some of you, you're like, I didn't know God would ever want a relationship with me. But the cool thing is, is, is that's why Jesus came, was to set us right with God and for us to have that connection with him. So read his word and allow it to speak to you no matter what decisions that you'll face now or you'll face in the future. And then the last thing I've come to learn about wisdom over the years that has helped me in my life and hopefully to help you is the last big thought is that we need to reach out to God's people. So we rely on his voice, we read his word, and then we reach out to God's people. Some of the best wisdom and advice that I've ever been given is through the people that God has put in my life. And you've had these people in your life, these people that God has handpicked and put in your life for a reason. And sometimes you didn't know why they were in your life. And sometimes you question it because they drove you crazy. But ultimately, at the end of the day, it was about God putting somebody in your life to help you, no matter what season of life that you were in. I know for me, I'm an extrovert personality, so I love processing things out loud with people. And it's been cool over the years to watch how God has spoke to me through my own personality, but allowing other people and voices to come into my life to help me with decisions that I was making. It helped me gain the clarity that I needed to hear the advice that was so beneficial for me. But you can't get that kind of advice if you're always living in isolation. If you're hiding from other people or avoiding other people, that's why God gave us each other. I mean, real quick, just look around the room. Look at all the people in here. Look at all the stories and the life that are around you. Like this is what the church is. The church is us as people coming together to do life with one another. But yet what happens sometimes, we'll just sit here on Sundays and then we'll walk out and we'll never get to know the people that God wants to put in our path. And I tell you what, I've been so impressed with the people that God has put in my path this year and watching how it's transformed my life. And I know how it can transform your life as well. So utilize the people that God has given you. Let them help you process and find the direction that you need from God. Because sometimes when we're stuck, we just need somebody else's help and perspective. And God puts those people in our path to tell us things or show us things that we couldn't have heard on our own. And so I want you to think about those things. Think about the big decisions that you have in your life right now. And where are you finding the wisdom that you need to make those decisions that affect your future? Because all of us have a story. And all of us want to be proud of the stories that we live, and ultimately the stories that we tell. And I know every chapter of our stories isn't perfect. I know if you look back on your past and I look back on my past, there are chapters and, and paragraphs that I'm not proud to tell. But the cool thing about God is when he comes into our lives, he allows us to write a better story. He gives us a whole new future. He tells us that when we follow him, that is the best way that we can live the best life that he's created for us. And it's not always easy, but it's always better. And for you and I, we have to choose today. If we've had bad stories or we're not proud of our lives, today can start a new day for you with God. God can begin to help you understand that your days are numbered 
and that you have a limited amount of days to write a story, and he wants to help you rewrite the rest of your story. But you have to allow him in. And so we have to rely on his voice. We have to read his word. And we have to reach out to those people that he's put in our path. And as we do those things, God wants to give us the wisdom that we need to face whatever life throws at us. But where do you need more wisdom for your future today as you think about your life and the decisions that you have? I love this, the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. I want to show you this because a lot of us think, oh, is that just for the Old Testament, you know, all that? But, but this story of wisdom is woven throughout the whole narrative of Scripture. And so we see this in the New Testament where Paul says this. He says, so then be careful how you walk, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of your time. Make the most of your time. And how do we do that? We be careful how we walk. We be careful how we live. We number our days and remember how important and sacred each day that God has given us is. And as we do that, we'll see God continue to show up in our lives and help us live this life better so that we aren't wasting precious days that he's given us. So let's number our future and realize that God's got a great plan for every single day of our lives if we choose to trust in him. And I remember um, meeting somebody that helped me understand this so well. Uh, a few months ago, I had the opportunity to lead a funeral service for a dear man that had been attending our church for a long time. His name was Mr. Bobby. You probably saw him out there. He would greet you and always had a smile on his face. And as I was doing his funeral, I met with the family and I just asked them, I said, hey, what are some stories that you remembered? And so we started talking about these stories. And as I got to the funeral to share about his life, there was one story that stood out to me that all of us laughed and could relate to. Every time you would approach Mr. Bobby, you'd go up to him and say, hey, Bobby, you having a good day? And he'd usually respond something like this. Nope, I'm not having a good day. And ultimately, you start thinking like, okay, what's going on? How, how can I help him? You know, what, what's going on in his life? But before you could even answer him back, he would say, you know what? I'm not having a good day. I'm having a great day because I'm alive another day. And I'm like, man, Mr. Bobby, I fell for it again, right? But it was just something that was a part of who he was. And that was his perspective on life. And I know every day wasn't perfect for him because I know there were days that he would come into church or come into serve where he just went through a surgery or something tough in his life or was dealing with some family stuff. But every day he knew was a gift from God. And he took every day as this idea that today's not just gonna be a good day, today's gonna be a great day because I'm alive another day. I thought about that as I was thinking about today and what a perspective to live with, right? that if you and I are only given a certain amount of days, if we're only allowed this amount of time on earth, let's not waste it. Let's live each day, not as a, a good day. Let, let's live each day as a great day because we have an incredible God who's, who's given us another day here on this earth. And I know things don't go easy and things are hard and, and we make mistakes and wrong turns. We don't know where to go or what to do sometimes. But the great thing is, is we have a God who loves and cares about us so much that he wants to help us in our times of need. And so I don't know what decision you're wrestling with today. I don't know what you're going through in your life that brought you to church today. But I know we all have tough decisions to make. I know we all have tough choices ahead of us that not only affect our now, but, but affect our future. And so you and I, we have to be wise about about the days that we're given in order to prepare for the future that God ultimately has in store for all of us. And so today, how can you take a moment to, to think about your story? And are you living a story that you're proud of? And if not today, we have a God who loves to come and rewrite the best of stories and teach us a better way to live. God, teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Today is not just a good day. Today is a great day because I'm alive another day. And no matter how many days you have left, 
let's live them to the best of our abilities and allow God to show up and to show off in the midst of all that we go through and struggle with. And so today, as we conclude our our service and our time together, what I wanted to do, there was this old song that came out a long time ago, but it was called, How Great Is Our God? And as I was preparing for today, I, I got to thinking about that song because a lot of times my day isn't great. A lot of the times my decisions are hard. A lot of the times life doesn't go my way. But the thing that remains at the end of the day is that I serve a great God. So no matter how bad my day is, no matter how great or good I feel about myself or horrible I feel about myself, that there's a great God in heaven who wants to help me write a better story. And so today we're just gonna take a moment to thank God for who he is, for being the incredible great God, for loving us and caring for us. And I want you just to have a moment with God, whether you take this moment to pray and thank God for who he is, or you just sing out the lyrics of this song, or maybe you just reflect on why you've been angry at God or what's been in between you and God that's hindered you during this time, whatever it may be. I want us to conclude this series with with declaring God's greatness. And as we do that, he'll help each and every other of our days be great as well. Even when we don't feel great, we serve a great God. And so let's take a moment to give him the thanks that he deserves and to seek him for the wisdom that we need. Because you and I, we may not know what what to do. We may be lost or hurting, but God knows it all. And he wants to help each and every one of us write a better story so our futures can be better. So I'm gonna ask you to go ahead and stand up where you're at for a moment. And I just want an opportunity to pray for you that as we finish this time, that this is only the beginning of your wisdom journey, that you would look back on our time together and have the resources and tools and questions to seek God for whatever clarity that you need in your life. And so let's pray together and ask God to be with us over the next few moments as we just spend time seeking him as we leave here today. God, I thank you for today. God, I thank you for this series and these last few weeks. And God, it's so hard to go through this life and not know what to do or what turn to make. But God, ultimately, you know us, you love us. And God, you help us no matter what we go through. And so God, I ask today that you give us the wisdom that we need to create the future that you've designed for us. God, when we get lost, I pray that you reroute us. God, where we feel broken, I feel like, God, that you could come in and restore those places that we could never find healing. And God, today, whatever we're going through, whatever we're struggling with, God, we would ultimately give it to you. And God, we pray that you would help us discover the wisdom that we need to live the full life that you've created for us to live. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we thank you. We give these next few moments to you to just declare how great you are. So may you quiet our minds, allow our souls to listen to you as we take this next few moments to worship our great God. We love you and we praise you. And it's in Jesus' name we pray, amen.